Hey guys, welcome to the final match between Morrow and Straylock. This is the finals, this is the last match, and I still, my mind's freaking out over that last match. So when I was like, oh yeah, I the Roach thing, stupid, stupid of me. Taking out that spawning pool, delayed Banelings, which is really the big threat to Straylock's army there. And wow, that's all I can say. Brilliantly played by Straylock. Really br brilliantly played. Uh, just incredible. Um, 9 o'clock location, we have Morrow as the Red Zerg. 3 o'clock location, we have Straylock as the Blue Turn. As long as he landed, more or less, gathered those troops and those medevacs healing up above. Even if Morrow, uh, that's the thing, the Morrow, uh, the Morrow, Morrow wasn't going to be able to get um, more or less spine crawlers out in positions. Uh, they're just not very mobile is the problem. He needed those my, uh, those Hydalisks to engage and specifically engage those drop those dropships before the... Cause, Eight Hydalus is good enough to kill Marines that are dropping out of the Medivacs one at a time, even pick off the Medivacs themselves, but not enough against a full ground army like that. So Strelok playing that beautifully. Looks like this is going to be distanced, um, so could favor Morrow, but this is classically a Terran favored map because you have this high ground, which Terran can just exploit up and down. Apparently both these guys playing for nine hours straight, so unbelievable. But yeah, you can get Thors up here, just wreak havoc over that natural expansion. Um, and I assume Straylock is going to exploit that. But at the same time, if Morrow can provide some sort of defense against, uh, get some sort of anti-air up, uh, maybe, sometimes you'll see Roaches. Roaches play on the low ground. Just an overwhelming amount. Looks like he's going for a fast expansion build, um, which provides some defense. Um, I, I, I kind of like the Roach option occasionally. But, uh, nevertheless, it's kind of up and I assume Straylock's going to exploit that. Um, but he needs to get something accomplished because every single match that has gone into a longer macro game, Morrow has just uh, more or less taken over, uh, particularly in the mid game, particularly with that creep spreading. His baneling play has been incredible. Looks like a spawning pool along that back edge. See how he decides to play it, scouting that 12 o'clock location now. Um, and a SCV actually moving around. Um, let's see what direction it goes in the scouting pattern. Um, actually coming across that drone now. And it looks like that Marine is going to push out to engage it. Overlord also heading to this low ramp to provide some additional scouting information. But at least in the short term, Morrow is going to be denied. And uh, that's the other thing that Morrow's done fantastically. He's just done really, really good job of scouting. Just been absolutely on top of the changelings, having overlords absolutely everywhere, which kind of hurt him last time, last map, but uh, still brilliant. I, I, I'll stop talking about the, the last match. Anyway, um, gas has been tacked on, and interestingly enough, Straylock going for a fast expansion build. So going Rax immediately into Command Center. So with a little bit of defense, it looks like Morrow has got that fast expansion up as well. Tacking on gas, SCV is just having a field day of scouting information back here. He's the only one to ever see creep this early in his life. Um, plenty of scouting information. It look, an interesting play for Morrow. So it looks like his initial defense, it, rather than Zerglings, because he's, forget the SCV, he's going to scout what he's going to scout. Planting a spine crawler down, which will provide, especially if he can get up on this uh, Zelnaga Watchtower, or even the other Zelnaga Watchtower, depending on where Straylock positions his troops, it'll provide additional time, additional padding against any sort of ground army, that any sort of timing attack that was coming early at cross positions, which I assume Straylock's not going to do. And additionally, he can reposition the spine crawler to provide some additional defense against that high ground. And that can be very effective. I think three is the magic number against Thors, and that's usually what you'll see. So factory uh, planted, looks like command center, second gas for Straylock, so gathering that up, it looks like he is adding on a tech lab. Um, there's the starport, and you'll probably see a armory in not too long. Um, to field the Thors as well. It looks like it looks like Morrow on his way to Lair Tech. I'm pushing that spine collar a little bit forward. Love that queen on the ramp to deny any additional scouting. And already has that creep tumor um, to press forward. Another spine collar it looks like in that natural, just in case there were any Hellion attacks um, that were planned. And actually a tank. So it looks like we're going to see siege tanks instead on the high ground, which this, uh, wow, this could be really awesome. It depends on how much Straylock focus fires is, is really what it comes down to, because Marl will be happy, and there's the third spine crawler now, because Marl will be happy to have these spine crawlers absorb hits as long as he's not losing drones and as long as that gas is not being disrupted um, specifically and it looks like Straylock now taking that natural expansion and that siege tank uh, up a medevac now on the way in two additional barracks so kind of a mixture uh, mech 
And I'd, I'd like to see more siege tanks actually to deal with those banelings early. So mech composition, we're seeing a spire upgrade, and this is this is going to be close actually. So that medevac should land. The spire is going to be up not too long after. There's a three spine collars to provide some of that um, that damage padding. Two, uh, oops, oops. Uh, two, <laughs> even commentators make mistakes all the time. We're not always perfect. Um, uh, Bedevac loading up with a single SCV to, and I think there's got to be an engineering bay somewhere along here for Straylock. Um, also providing a Viking along this other edge. So, it, at the very least, he'll be able to build a bunker initially, and I love what Marl's doing, spreading creep to make the SCV building up on the high ground more difficult. Now loading up, now that the medevac's been spotted. Um, unfortunately, they're going to have to be more uh, damage absorbing rather than uh, floor repelling, I guess. Um, so, Marines being dropped off, they should be able to, they need to actually stay back because of those spine crawlers. But that siege tank, um, again, needs to focus on this extractor and it looks like instead the spine crawler is taking damage and they can take it very happily um, take damage and, and hop back and forth this is great they're easy to transfuse uh, again it's the extractors and the drones that Marl was a bit more concerned about with that bunker being upgraded in the meantime a lot of mutalisks being built seven mutalisks um, coming to repel this in a moment uh, and it looks like now that extractor getting hit and Marl not lost one drone there but hasn't taken significant losses yet so uh, not too shabby it looks like follow-up so a reactor two additional barracks um, and yeah pretty pretty interesting mech composition here um, Viking now up and this is going to be close you should see needless momentarily that single Viking is not going to be enough to evict them uh, that extractor was taken out so still some damage here that Straylock was able to inflict but losing everything up on the high ground which is going to open things up quite a bit for Morrow and these mutalisks uh, should be able to take a degree of map control. Looks like they're going to try to pick off that medevac. Yeah, medevac. medevac. Looks like that bunker has taken some damage in the meantime. Now the spine collar is going to dive right back in, even though they're very low on health. Um, should be able to, uh, with either spotting from those mutalisks or an overlord. <laughs> looks like it's going to be the overlord. Uh, yeah, range and take out that bunker. It looks like that extractor built a little bit too quickly, taken out as well. So Morrow having his gas disrupted. He does have the mutalisks that should provide some mobility. The Marines running for their lives. We're like, let it burn, let it burn. Uh, but combat shield and stim pack upgrades on the way as well as level 1 weapons. And that's a lot of marines. Another medevac built. And this has been the MO for Straylock in all of the matches. Which is just constant harassment. Marl feeling very frisky. Going to take the 12 o'clock base under a mutilous harass. Just feeling he has map control now that more or less Straylock cannot press into him. Which is really not the case. He could probably load up another medevac um, and kind of do shenanigans like he's done in the, in the past. But he does need to move at least some marines back here to deal with this mutilous harass. There's some turrets but not enough coverage. So it looks like Marl is going to be able to get a little bit of damage. Maybe even some SEV kills. And never mind. Straylock once again just going to abandon his base. Attack forward. Let the turrets... Um, the defend in the meantime, try to repair on the short. Uh, and wow, Marl taking the 12 o'clock as well, just feeling that Straylock is definitively pinned back. And it looks like Straylock, I don't know that Marl has enough to defend this once again, but honestly, all these times we've been like, oh, he doesn't have enough to defend. Um, he's defended. And this is a lot of creep coverage for Zerglings to get a lot accomplished. Um, three spine colors still there on the front, but keep in mind there is Siege Tank as well. Mutilus uh, coming back, and it looks like there's an Overseer on that low ground, or I'm sorry, uh, to the north of that base. But Straylock just pressing forward to force those Mutilisks back. Unfortunately, he doesn't know about this these shenanigans which um, hopefully he gets that sooner rather than later because Morrow is playing a very risky game here still three Marines um, that provide some support and it looks like he's running up to the gold expansion just to check it and he's going okay um, no expansion there yet I'm gonna load up and do some more harassment uh, at the high ground use these siege tanks um, across this location to provide and maybe even just elevator things across or maybe even use these siege tanks on uh, across this ridge to provide some defense that spine crawler still bleeding zerglings running up with their speed uh, siege tanks loading up mutilus diving in and it looks like they are going to be able to get a lot of those marines um before they're uh, it looks like oof, i'm actually cleaning this up nicely zerglings on the low ground getting taken out by the siege tanks but the mutilus um, just too many in the air it looks like and one marine holding out but not enough to hold uh, and prevent these mutilisks from taking out that dropship to the north and morrow is now rolling uh, he's uh, still behind economically, but he's not going to be behind economically for long. Straylock ditching the troops where he can. Another army pressing out. Looks like he's thinking about taking his gold uh, after clearing the, uh, the, the Zelnaga watchtower first. And more troops starting to flood out. Really nice purple highway starting to... And I, I know I keep calling it that, but I, I just like that visual. The purple highway. Um, pressing forward a hero marine 
Wow, stim packing, gonna check out the 12 o'clock, and this is, oh, this has gotta be depressing for, for Strayla. Uh, Hero Spinecrawler almost blocking, but not quite able to slip through, and his sacrifice, uh, wow, huge sacrifice, well, well-meaning, and that gave a ton of information. That was a, that's a big salute to that Marine. You are a true hero for the Straylock cause. So Straylock now realizing he needs to get aggressive or he's going to just be way behind economically. He already has that, uh, that command center to float out to the gold, but honestly, two bases to the north. Also gold expansion, just waiting to be plucked up. Morrow in a fantastic economic position. A Baneling Nest once again with those dual evolution chambers. Let's see if he gets those upgrades rolling. Uh, momentarily. Also, Phenomenized Carapace to get uh, more Overlord coverage speed, maybe even some Overlord drops. Looks like a Marine checking out the 6 o'clock uh, as well. Overseer dropping off and seeing that Medivac move to the north, so now Straylock going to try to do some pincer attacks. Not really worried about losing a gold expansion here. The pressure on there realizes that Moro's more in a defensive position. There is a Spine Crawler um, and a lot of Zerglings. So actually, drones being produced here. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, very quickly dispatched. Oh, Straylock and completely wiped out there to the north. Um, still two changelings there on the low ground. And this is this is a bad scenario here for Straylock. Straylock needs to run. He needs to get aggressive. He can't just sit back um, with Morrow having two bases like he has um, and able to saturate just extremely rapidly. Otherwise, it looks like 67 harvesters already. You're going to see that climb and climb quickly. Oh, uh, he's going to have a huge economic output. He's going to be able to hit 200 way before Straylock's even in a position where he can defend. After seeing some of the baneling busts that have happened prior, um, I would not be happy to, I would definitely not be content to just sit and look at this creep spread already. And uh, oof, this is a really scary situation, I got to say. Nice Overlord co coverage just after, look at the uh, look at the Overlords just on the perimeter for Morrow, realizing how, how harass. Uh, how frustrating those medevacs have been in the prior matches. Doing a fantastic job. He sees practically everything. Look at that. Uh, just beautiful, beautiful play. He even has uh, a good look with these changelings right on top of Straylock's army. His scouting information has just been absolutely supreme. He's in a position to, to take some gold. I think he's going to be going up to drop in not too long if he, he hasn't already. More spine collars being planted. A lot of zerglings and a lot of mutalisks already out. Uh, ready to pounce on any position. Really the key for Morrow is to just have a big army um, and while Straylock is trying to play the slow game and try to slowly inch his way out here and then take the six o'clock and then try to play a long-term game where Morrow throws his army into his and it, you know, his army just sits there and laughs and scoffs, uh, you know, in standard uh, Straylock style and ah ha ha ha. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. I think the Bayonets are just going to roll through this. Some Thors being produced, level 2 weapons. Um, we do have level 1 Carapace. Uh, and really the trick uh, for Straylock has got to be some additional drops. Um, again, he needs to go in. He needs to slow the economy down. Look at all these spine crawlers to the north, though. Uh, and he uh, it still looks like, yeah, 3 to the, to the at the main. I'm not even sure where he would be able to get a drop accomplished. Um, you'd have to do it with probably a heavy Marauder Force. And... Marauders do not do so well against the Mutalisks that are um, fielded out in the air, but uh, yeah, I fear. So yes, again, this looks formidable, but again, the Banelings also look very scary. Mutalisks diving in, wiping out the turrets now that they have critical mass. Um, Straylock completely out of position. Oh, um, and it looks like every single turret has been picked off. The Marines trying to uh, just kind of pushing their way through back to the main, but the damage has already been done. It looks like even some of these uh, supply depots with the drop upgrade on top of them being hit. Straylock, uh, yeah, being pushed back, and now both players, actually both players, are just about at a max army, so it's going to come down to, to upgrades, mobility. Oh, Straylock losing some, some more territory, and actually, I take it back, Straylock's not in that terrible position here. Despite losing all these supply depots, these mulesks, I like the task force of mulesks, but really the key is this area right here and upgrades. Um, and it looks like, I think he's got the upgrade lead, level 2 weapons, level 1 armor, um, versus just, and I don't see Carapace coming along for, um, and it, basically it's just going to be Baneling rejection, which I think the Carapace upgrade is really the key moment here. And uh, this is going to be key for Morrow, is diving in with these mutalisks, bottom right Straylock, um, just taking up that expansion, dumping a lot of missile turrets down, going to need to get a lot more supply depots out if he just decides to plant down. A couple command centers, maybe make them into planetary fortresses to just put some more, that's a lot of siege tanks actually. Um, we'll see if he gets these siege tanks additionally sieged up to provide some additional anti-baneling support. 
but you got the, the uh, Carapace level 2 upgrades along the way, both players macroing up. Wow. Tech the layer, gold expansion already taken. So uh, again, a larger economy right now for Morrow. Um, and you can see significantly so. But again, uh, as long as Straylock holds his territory and you can sneak out and take the 6 o'clock, um, it looks like losing more of his main here. Um, Straylock and now moving up with a huge amount of siege tanks, not content to just sit back. Beautiful comm set there to catch a lot of that army. Sieging up um, just before Morrow was able to get in strike distance, so very close right there. And just kind of stepping forward, the Mutalist driving and trying to deal with those tanks. The tanks on siege, the Banelands running in. Uh, oh my goodness, the Banelands diving and just taking out every single siege tank, wiping out Straylock's army. And when you're in army trade mode, um, against a Zerg, you do not want to see that happen because they can rebuild so rapidly and it just takes a while for Terran to, to replenish their forces. So uh, you'll just, you can just watch the count comparatively. Apparently the game uh, was paused right there, which is the flood of this. I guess things moving a little bit slow. But yeah, I've got to give a significant advantage now tomorrow. Because um, he's just, look at that bank that he's rolling. On top of that, Straylock um, actually doing a good job of catching up economic or uh, catching up just in his macro. I guess that's what you can do with four factories. But still, um, four factories, three bases, still hasn't even made a move to taking the six o'clock. Morrow is mining all over the place. He is still mining at a really nice rate, particularly high in gas, significantly high in gas. He actually is right at the harvester count he wants to be at. Doesn't really want to get any higher than this. Um, and he's got plenty of tech. He's got the hive tech out. He's got the upgrades going. He has an infestation pit uh, rolling. But Straylock, pretty highly upgraded. Level 1 weapons. Still needs to roll with those. Uh, it looks like he is rolling. The upgraded to stay ahead. Corruptors being fielded by Morrow. So we might see actually a greater spire in not too long. And it looks like we are seeing that greater spire morphing. Um, and we, we're going to see some Broodlords, which could do wreak all sorts of havoc on this army. Because um, Siege Tank splash on splash with Marines. Uh, it's not a happy day for the Terran masses. And <laughs> wow. Uh, somehow Morrow sneaking in some creep tumors to the north and actually creeping this entire. It looks like he snuck a queen in actually. On, a, on slow move there, so he's able to just make that six block base mostly inaccessible. More spine colors than the frost here. And we might see an elevated with um, a couple of Vikings out. This is actually a critical timing for Morrow because Morrow doesn't really have those blue birds out in play. And, uh, it does have some damage, but ooh, some nice fumble birds uh, on the low ground. The pin loads on the pin in place. The investor is getting absolutely eaten alive. More fumble birds. Um, looks like. Just not enough bailings to really attack in. So Straylock now doing that slow push forward that he really wanted to um, and wasn't able to in the past. He sees the corruptors out in the air, and whenever you see corruptors, you got to be thinking blue lords. Got to be thinking blue lords. Um, still an overseer right in the base, getting plenty of scouting information. By the way, go ahead and the army count. It looks like Straylock has gotten an elevator to the north, and I don't think Marlon's going to be able to stop this attack um, as it dives in. He's got the spine colors there, but he doesn't have the bailings to really um, sneak around. It looks like some Zergans trying to run to the north on the right. A little bit of defense, and it looks like they are going to be able to clean this up just because uh, level 2 weapons are going to be and I think they've got adrenal glands as well. So rejecting that attack, but now it looks like Straylock has managed to create a little bit of a fork uh, and see if he can elevate her more up and uh, just let the siege tanks absorb and pop the Broodlords. The Broodlords are coming! Uh, and I think that's going to stop this attack cold. Yeah, the blue boards are really what's going to be brutal. Fungal growth on the low ground. Plenty of corruptors to deal with those Vikings. Um, the new list is trying to engage fungal growth on the Vikings as well. Oh, man. Um, just eaten alive right there. And now the, the very mighty blue uh, just forcing the siege tank to blow themselves up. Corruptors swinging about to take care of the Vikings. That's a lot of Vikings there fielding from Straylock. It looks like Straylock's starting to just mass pump the Vikings to try to deal with this, unfortunately. Um, I don't think I, I don't know that it will be enough, uh, just because the corrupt is still chewing things alive. But Straylock holds. Straylock somehow holds his 12 o'clock base. He's continuing to press forward, and now Morrow in a lot of trouble. He needs to hold these bases to the north because um, if he does not, he's uh, that's it. I mean, he's not going to have the economy to really keep up and repel this. So Straylock continuing to slow move this forward. Nice again, another beautiful fungal growth. It looks like the Bainings weren't able to get on the interior, and it's not. Uh, look, while the Vikings are cleared out, um, the Thor is just punishing those Corruptors underneath. The corruptors 
just melting more blue boards uh, at the forward position, but they're just they're getting wiped out very rapidly. And Shreelock slowly, slowly just crawling forward into Morrow's main. Or I should say the new Morrow main at 12 o'clock. Um, and this is just a beautiful slow push, and this is the glory of the Terran army. Just slowly, like a cheese grater, going through a big block of Swiss cheese. Uh, just annihilating them. SCVs on group repair on the low ground as well. Uh, unfortunately, Broodlord's still uh, in flight and not enough Vikings to provide additional defense. It looks like uh, this, none of the Marines actually providing some explosive damage to try to pro provide some defense for the siege things themselves. Um, additional Broodlord's getting taken out and Straylock is moving forward, still has plenty of siege tanks to just walk into the 12 o'clock base. Morrow losing his 12 o'clock expansion. Wow. Uh, the Broodlord's not able to get it accomplished. Too many Vikings out in the air, and it looks like he's still trying to keep up with that anti-air, but he's going to lose significant portions of his gas, significant portions of his economy. Um, still a huge influx for him, and Straylock uh, needs to start clearing out that 6 o'clock so he can persist with this attack, because if he doesn't hurry up and do that, um, he's actually just going to be hurting for resources across the board. Uh, more Vikings, in, uh, more food towards morphing in. I think Straylock's economy is actually uh, close to nil here. Yeah, he's actually distance mining here at the 6 o'clock. So maybe if Morrow can refocus, um, deny the 6, and swing back and get something here, because he is still rolling out of this gold. And uh, I think he's still, well, okay, he doesn't have that amazing expansion. But I think this is Straylock's main now floating out to take up possession of the 12 o'clock. That's kind of clever. So distance mining at the 6 and taking up possession of the 12 o'clock uh, expansions. That's really going to hurt Morrow. Um, but a significant Broodlord force has been produced, and it's going to be Broodlord versus Vikings. Level 1 weapons have been upgraded uh, comparatively there, and I don't think there are any level, uh, yeah, zero upgrades of air for Terran, but there, there's that SCV repair factor that you also have to keep in mind. Um, middle of the base completely open. Looks like some overlords uh, starting to kind of float forward, and they're going to provide some scouting information. Now Straylock has done it. He's taken the 12 o'clock, but the game is uh, far from over. He's still trying. He's still having to distance mine here at the 6. Um, I don't know when he's going to be able to clear that out. And uh, Morrow uh, still has a formidable army that's that's fielded. It's not huge, but it's still formidable. That's plenty of broodlords. That's a uh, that's decent amount of corruptors. And it looks like he has some infestors fielded as well. So he can still do some damage here and there. He can still get it accomplished. But wow, uh, marauding group, of, uh, I guess marauding shouldn't be there. A Viking group of Vikings um, starting to clear out that upper left starting to just uh, really peel things out and some zerglings now finally taking out these SCVs to the low ground but there is a planetary fortress that they're re returning to at this gold expansion so they can't afford to get too close um, but uh, it looks like the Vikings getting fungal growth in the meantime but trying to run around and be everywhere at once clearing out a lot of these overlords I don't think that's going to hurt Morrow too much because I think he's an overabundance of overlords at the moment he doesn't really have the economy that he can fill in uh, Straylock actually should just attack me with these SCVs to take care of these Zerglings. Instead, it looks like he's just bleeding some harvesters here to the south, but um, 12 o'clock base is producing for him. Looks like he's not capping the gas there because he's mostly been lined out. Uh, it's still some spring crawlers that are just going to die. Oh, that's so sad. They don't even have the creep to keep them alive. But uh, now Morrow is starting to go on the offensive. He's got the five blue lords, he's got the ten corruptors, he's got four infestors, and he's itching for a fight, really. He's itching to catch uh, Straylock somewhere out of position. He's expanding the six o'clock. Um, wow. Uh, the rest of the SCVs have been cleared out. Straylock uh, just kind of absentmindedly letting them die, perhaps um, intentionally, just feeling like, okay, I've got the 12 o'clock, I don't need to worry about it. I still have this bottom right base mining, I don't need to worry too much. Uh, but he's pretty low on harvesters, actually. Both guys are really low on harvesters at this stage. Now the big engagement, corrupt is running forward. That's too many Vikings, though. So it looks like the Blue Bird's having to back off. But a fungal growth, clutch fungal growth for the Marines underneath. Um, forcing a backup, another fungal growth uh, to minimize the effect on this other Marines and drawing them right to the spine crawler line. The corruptors once again diving in, and it looks like the Viking's going to be cleared out. Beautiful Michael by Mana um, to really whittle this army down. Uh, but he's taken significant losses. I think he's down to just a single Broodlord now. Yeah, just a single Broodlord. And he did kind of eat into Straylock's horses, but he didn't get that critical uh, that critical number, which is the 20 freaking tanks. Um, still 28 Marines underneath and a significant amount of Vikings overhead 
So things not looking good for Maro, but he is expanding to the six o'clock right under uh, Straylock's nose. So, and Straylock still hasn't gotten, uh, wow, just doing nothing but mules, but still isn't producing at the one o'clock main here, um, which is really going to be the money slot for him. And actually, I think this could come in uh, to big effect here if he can maintain air control. More Vikings starting to flood out for him. And so it's going to be, it looks like, mostly an air-on-air -air battle to follow this out with some Festers underneath for Morrow. So that fungal growth really going to be key. Um, the Overlord's actually trying to retreat now because he realizes, hey, you don't need these Overlords scouting for me out in the middle of nowhere. And that's not territory I actually control. Um, the Vikings want to pull the are going to be able to put some of these Overlords off. But this is ridiculous. Um, absolutely insane. Uh, looks like these investors were hoping to charge forward and catch a couple of these Vikings out in open field, get a couple fungals off on them. Um, but it looks like they were able to, and they're going to drop some of those uh, infested marines to take care of them uh, in midfield to Straylock. Losing a couple of units here and there, but every unit counts at this stage because it looks like it is going to be a starvation match. Morrow again mining here at the 6 o'clock. And actually, let's bring up the production tab. He's actually significantly ahead of Straylock in just pure production. But Straylock now building a command center at the 1 o'clock. Um, there's still a lot of Zerglings out here, but Straylock really, wow, uh, really well bunkered up at his main, really well bunkered up um, here to the north as well. And uh, I'm not sure what Morrow can really do. Maybe kind of a sneaky drop along here, but um, I don't know. With Vikings flooding across that region, it would be very difficult. Now it looks like a medevac and some marines trying to encroach here, realizing, oh wait, there's an expansion there. Uh, the medevac, not, uh, he does save three of the marines, but their fungal growth uh, infested marines on the short ground. That's going to take care of that medevac in the meantime. Maybe that'll wake Straylock up a little bit, but I don't think the uh, the mighty Terran army is thinking about going anywhere soon. I think he's perfectly content just to sit with his Viking force uh, with these siege tanks. It's easy to be uh, brave when you have a big stick, you know? Like, a, And by a big stick, I mean like 40 tons of dynamite that rains down at range from the air. So a couple of, uh, looks like infested Terrans just checking the range, trying to do damage. And these infested Terrans could be a wild card with the infestors, because keep in mind, infested Terrans, um, that's a lot of units that could be produced. Vikings uh, starting to marauder out, and I need to call it Viking out, because that's really what they're doing. They're just going and pillaging the air, is what it comes down to. So, uh, Morrow, once again, sh uh, he's less shelled up here at the 6 o'clock. The beautiful thing for him, though, is he knows Straylock's not going anywhere. He's got an extremely immobile army, uh, outside of the Vikings, of course, with their, well, their Vikingness. Um, ma -ha -ha -ha, they mock. And now a very, wow, just as I say that, the Vikings and the siege tanks moving out. Looks like they're going to press down to the 6 o'clock on top of Creep. Very dangerous situation to be, especially with all these Infestors and Zerglings nearby. Fortunately, no Banelings. Not that it really makes a difference, because wow, look at those siege tanks. Um, Straylock pressing forward. Uh, and now the question is, is where does he go? Um, what territory does he attack? Does he go to the 6 o'clock and risk a counterattack at his main? Um, does he slowly press that direction? Does he uh, just try to wipe out, uh, just kind of bait Morrow into a fight and try to hope for the best? Looks like some Banelings have been morphed in. Just two Broodlords to the north. Does he just try to get rid of this creep? Um, creep tumors, and it looks like he is trying to approach slowly to the south. Uh, and Morrow is just having to sit back and watch as this army slowly presses forward. Matt King does not know what's um, very quickly wiped up Comsat on the high ground. Uh, some <laughs> overlords actually elevating the troops to the north because this is going to be a critical expansion. If Straylog does take out the 6 o'clock, uh, Morrow is going to be more or less out of resources and stranded and just kind of in a GG situation. Close fungal growth, and this is just really tense, really tight. Straylock trying to play this as carefully as possible. Uh, does not want to run into burrow troops, does not want... Um, he's trying to be uh, safe, but a lot of investors to the north. Um, let's see if they manage to land some fungal growth, or maybe the Googlers can go up. But it looks like tomorrow, not quite in position. Maybe the Zerglings can screen. You'll see some fungals and some infested turns underneath. Uh, but not looking good at all. The moon's just charging in, providing some buffering for those siege tanks. The Vikings also checking things out. The rest of the army has landed for Morrow. He does not have a lot of time though. He needs to hurry up before this hatch is taken out. There he goes! Um, oh my goodness. Uh, wow. Neural parasite across all of the siege tanks uh, to just reverse Straylock's army on top of himself. Oh, beautiful play by, by Morrow. And there Straylock's armies to the south melting uh, under... Wow. 
under Morrow's control. Fungal growth on top of the, the Vikings as well. Doesn't look as many. Uh, the Vikings are going to mostly escape, but beautiful defense and beautiful timing. Doesn't lose the 6 o'clock. Maintains defense. Was able to peel back a lot of troops. Um, still at a, a supply disadvantage. I think that might be mostly... No, actually, um, just pure supply, but he's just had fantastic large army macro across all of this. He's looking somewhat thin, though, um, and this 12 o'clock base, well, never mind, looking thin for Straylock as well, and he still has, it looks like, twice the economic output comparatively, and now Morrow taking up this beautiful, ripe 6 o'clock location, which is uh, outside of the top left, the only expansion that's really standing. Morrow perhaps feeling a little bit frisky. Those overlords looking very pleased with themselves, I have to say. And the Neural Parasite wasn't even th something I was considering there. Wow, that was genius. Absolutely genius play. Um, but another big mech uh, marine army moving out for Straylock. Looks like some more Neural Parasite. This time the Vikings being Neural Parasited. Some fungal growth on the sea chains from the low ground. It looks like they're going to blow themselves up some more. Uh, oh, a lot of these infestors getting taken out. It looks like not enough. So Morrow that time losing more troops than he really wanted to. And that should open up an attack for Straylock at 6 o'clock. Also has some SEVs repairing in. And Straylock just boxed out. Is going to watch this hatchery die, and now, uh, yeah, nothing but overlords to really watch it happen as well. Uh, trying to delay this with some fungal growth. Uh, actually, wonder if the uh, fungal growth would it still be fungal growth? I think plural, it's still fungal growth. Down to just 80 supply, he's just watching Straylock move in, um, and it looks like Straylock is going to be able to take out this expansion this time, and uh, bar a miracle, and it looks like it's just going to be suicide drops, I assume, um, to the low ground. No, it's actually going to be a repeat of that last situation, although Moro's, I think Moro's going to have less troops to really work with here, um, and I don't know that Straylock is going to let him uh, get it accomplished here, so another fungal growth um, right there, and let's see uh, some of those troops, uh, some of the infestors have been taken out, um, a couple of the, oof, uh, not even sure what's happening there, a lot of these troops I guess are just dying to the fungal. But not a lot of infestors coming in, just testing the lines with the infestor swarm eggs. Seeing that, yes, in fact, there are siege tanks now. Um, trying to do some Zergling drops. Still some Vikings, but they're not going to be enough Vikings to stop the, the Zerglings from dropping. Uh, wow, cover fire to try to get the Infestors in there, but the Infestors just melting to the siege tanks. More explosions to the 6 o'clock, and I think that's going to be it tomorrow. I think that's going to be GG. Loses the 6 o'clock base. Cut off now from resources. Straylock Army stands in the Terran uh, Ball Reign Supreme. Plenty of Vikings to take out the rest of the overlords, and uh, they're still going to drop over this. Looks like they're getting punk as well. But Marl, his, his economy is zip. He has nothing he's uh, getting in now. Straylock holds the 12 o'clock, um, has retaken, it looks like reestablishes, is waiting to take the 6, which is again the prime ripe uh, expansion. Still some Vikings and still some siege tanks sitting. Absolutely epic final, but it looks like Marl is in fact going to fall to Straylock. I think this is the last hurrah. Just some Zergling drop from headlong um, into the Vikings, and yeah, not getting a lot accomplished with that. There's GG's fantastic set. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening. Once again, uh, thank you to X, a.k.a. David Angel. Um, check out Reddit uh, and CharityCast on the 17th. You can check out other live streaming I'll be doing in the meantime uh, at justin.tv backslash Thanks for listening, everybody.